Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you indeed. I'm very honored to address you as uh, principals as well as association chairs and, and, you know, that incredible fraternity of Tibet leadership, which has such a phenomenal potential towards many of the things that we heard yesterday. And indeed, yesterday's presentations were thought-provoking from even a perspective of government, where increasingly a catalytic role that Tibet plays with respect to finding ways in which we're able to address many of the key features that were discussed and all those insights and thoughts and ideas that were presented, which included you know, some of the most innovative um, concepts, including uh, you know, prior learning systems, as well as inculcating capacities for indigenous knowledge and that uh, inclusive role of bringing a tradition and community together. But also, what was also in interesting and um, incredibly relevant to some of the values that we try to focus on as government by way of promoting greater levels of access to technical vocational training. And of course, the traditional method has always been to build as many institutions right up to village level within the context of East Africa. But innovative concepts like micro-credentials create greater levels of access and equity. And so, indeed, it's such forums that bring out some of the greatest and profound um, innovations that are yet to be established. Equally important is the emphasis yesterday with respect to you know, promoting technology as a key driver and thereby addressing other values which include equity and um, relevance and quality. And all of these values are universal within the context even of migration. The concept of uh, promoting these values through the innovation that needs to take place within the context of TIVIT is absolutely critical. This, lead, this brings me to yet uh, some of the challenges that were discussed yesterday and um, the uncertainty of, of um, um, labor market opportunities, the challenges with respect to the old um, issue with respect to stigma, the stigma of technical vocational training within the context of East Africa where, you know, parents generally promote university education and society in itself uh, regards university education as more important. But some of the other challenges too that were discussed, you know, the age-old challenge of trying to integrate and promote a relationship between the private sector and uh, technical vocational training institutions in order to promote greater levels of pathways and determined pathways to um, gainful employment. There's, of course, the issues with respect to COVID-19 and the very nature of our um, times at this moment, which has created great fragmentation and disruption of value chains, which indeed has affected markets and um, all forms of commerce, and how that plays a role with respect to the response of Tibet being very dynamic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I come to you today with two thoughts in my mind with respect to migration. And the first is, in order to address market systems and in order to galvanize the spirit of government, then one has to appreciate at the forefront that we could consider yet another model with respect to finding ways in which we're able to promote a partnership between private sector and technical vocational training institutions, and, and thereby promoting that necessary capacity to promote relevance, quality, access, and equity. And the catalyst, I believe, is to put our emphasis and support within the context of markets. While traditional partnerships have evolved by way of ensuring that we create partnerships between institutions and, uh, and the private sector, and we've just heard from the former speaker how challenging that is by way of um, private sector being exclusive and uh, essentially profit orientated, orientated, and that makes it incredibly difficult for them to diverse their investment on a long range capacity as far as productivity, innovation and efficiency. But I believe that within the context of the government's point of view where we create markets, we develop value chains, we uh, con concentrate uh, capacities 
with respect to certain enabling sectors like logistics, transport, and um, the entire facilitated networks and of utility, then the most important aspect and where we really need to put our nose on is markets themselves. And um, I think that that's the frontier that uh, we need to collectively take, especially within the context of the East African community. Now, why do I say this? What, what is now unraveling is uh, truly astonishing by world standards, by global standards. We're on the verge of the seventh partner state joining us, the DRC Congo, adding a, a total um, population of approximately 300 million people. This will make it under federation status, the fourth largest after India, China, the United States, and then would come the East African community. Of course, the history of the EAC has been 100 years in its making, starting from railways and technology and systems and so on. But what's important here is with five and a half million square kilometers, you can imagine that what is happening is a, a true transformation and uh, very much in line with what existed prior to colonization, where, you know, boundaries didn't exist. And within this context, this um, capacity with respect to its resource-rich minerals, its diverse population, the youth consisting of around 60 to 70 percent of the entire population of 300 million, this becomes a value proposition for markets and the way governments see markets as central towards um, the drive for prosperity, social, economic, and environmental issues. And indeed, within the context of EAC, we focus on certain value chains, like the textile value chains, you know, from seeds to spinning, ginning, weaving, and all the way to fashion. Or, you know, the, um, uh, the very important role of the automotive and transport industry in view of the fact that, you know, five and a half million square kilometers is a gigantic landmass, making it the 10th largest uh, geographical size in the world. Two, uh, we're looking at ways in which we're able to find ways in which we bring in new industries like the pharmaceutical industry or the um, leather industry. And all of these aspirations are based on the fact that there has to be a certain inclusive development, which means that, you know, our efforts as far as policies, legislations and regulations have to be concentric to promoting that level of inclusivity and thereby creating opportunities for all EAC citizens to access opportunity. Very important, as far as a value is concerned, is to promote the necessary self-reliance and the resilience of the market systems. I keep emphasizing a market system here amongst um, you know, highly uh, honored uh, leaders within the Tibet sector, because I'm trying to drive a point home that um, it's markets that determine the success of Tibet programs. It's markets that will determine the certainty of uh, investment in Tibet institutions. And it's markets that will bring the tripartite relationship together between governments, private sector, and Tibet institutions on a profitable basis. Business is not about sustainability, it's about profitability. Tibet is about profitability too. And so the need to find ways in which we're able to bring in the very qualities of Tibet, whether it's research, skills development, education transformation, and all the key innovations that you talked about yesterday by way of micro-credentials micro and all the other kinds of capacities have an integral capacity as far as that um, uh, remoteness and the ability to find ways in which we're able to bring a um, nexus between all the key stakeholders. So I really firmly believe that it's markets. It's markets, and indeed um, our role is to move from perspectives of uh, private sector Tibet Corporation to, to the ability to find ways in which we're able to promote market interventions into value chains. And it could be as simple as going to a supermarket and seeing all the different products on a shelf, but then relating it to the kind of Tibet work and jointly promoting the next generation of markets within a particular sector, whether it's toothpaste or, or um, cereals or other forms of technology and systems. So extremely important, and I do believe that uh, being in government, this indeed is an avenue for transformation and a value proposition for partnership. Now, this, that leads me to my second point, which uh, is about uh, uh, the link 
with respect to migration to gainful employment within the context of the East African community. Indeed, it's astonishing that we have uh, almost 7 million people migrating within this huge landmass mass of 5.5 million square kilometers. What's also equally astonishing is the fact that this migration pattern has doubled. And um, what's um, truly transformative is that we have more women migrating than men. And uh, rightly so, women are some of the most profound and distinct traders and uh, individuals within the platforms of commerce within the context of EAC. So we have approximately two million women who consistently promote the necessary business acumen, relationships, investment, and the promotion of cottage industries within the context of the East African community. And how exciting all of this is, because ultimately, this is a huge call for partnership by way of you know, the new frontier of Tivit transformation and how we're able to effectively link Tivit skills to high levels of productivity, innovation, efficiency, and opportunity, and that thereby create a nexus between current government policy or regional policy as far as uh, Tivit is concerned, and most importantly, that opportunity to promote the highest level of gainful employment as from our youth as well as our women. Now, it links me back to what has happened within the context of Europe. From what I understand, in the medieval times, uh, migration was an integral part of Tivit systems. And it, it was called um, by, and it took the name of a journeyman who had a dedicated apprentice or dedicated work profile based, of, based on three years of uh, migration within the context of Europe and uh, one day. And I think that within the context of migration and within the context of some of the key areas that were discussed yesterday in a, in a statement that was made by one of the um, presenters who, said, who went on to say that waters don't divide landmass. Uh, you know, we are one world. It is um, of great value to understand and appreciate that indeed the commerce platform is global. And within that context, um, value chains are interdependent. And therefore, Tivit's journey by way of migration is absolutely central towards uh, promoting levels of integration, not only to achieve um, solutions towards transboundary ecosystems, the SDGs, and some of the challenges that we face within the context of the East African community. For example, you know, the locust invasion starting in one country, but affecting harvests in another country, and having the Tivit skills and farming skills to address some of these uh, pests and challenges becomes absolutely critical. But even if we are to conserve waters, where waters start in one country from an upstream capacity are utilized downstream into different avenues of agriculture, and finally, you know, become a source for life for animals. It becomes absolutely critical for the welfare of the animals, for the welfare of downstream opportunities, that um, migration has a role by way of uh, aligning occupational standards and the promotion of centers of excellence. And this is exactly what the East African community is doing within the context of seeing to it that we harmonize occupational standards. Indeed, this is the highest level of dignity. If you can imagine a young person from Tanzania coming to the ports of Mombasa and having a level two underwater welding certificate, what a difference that makes to a person, a young person, to be recognized based on his merit, that particular skill. And certainly that would help within the context of how as um, different communities, different citizens, we're able to align our thoughts and um, align our disposition and be recognized within communities. Indeed, these are some of the most exciting aspects of, um, of um, developments by way of not only the possibility of ma market value chains and the importance of migration and how the EAC has put, in, put it at its effort um, um, migration as a key solution towards the promotion of commerce, but it's also supported by different policies like the customs union, which brings about a closeness of trade opportunities between partner states and harmonizes tariff lines. And recently, a new development has taken place where we're putting in a fourth band tariff 
Now, this is extremely important for TIVIT development because as far as TIVIT is concerned, it's uh, highly aligned to commerce. And so having a fourth band, which includes 35% of the fourth band for finished products, means uh, the East African community is highly poised for manufacturing excellence and that affordability towards uh, transformation. But what is also of concern to principals like yourselves is to appreciate the ecosystem further within the context of the uh, common market where we're trying to find ways in which uh, commerce has an integral part within the context of prosperity and competitiveness, but the mobility of people is clo closely linked in view of the fact that you know, the greater the diversity, the greater the outcomes of innovation and um, efficiency and transformation within the context of prosperity. And it's these you know, groundbreaking policy shifts that now make the East African community one of the most um, interesting blocks to invest in, whether you're a college uh, from, uh, from abroad or associations with a view of seeing how we're able to expand the possibility of migration and actually help it work naturally as it has done in ancient, ancient times, but now needs to be built into the context of where markets exist. I close by thanking you very much. I know that I'm joined by 20 principals from Kenya. Please do reach out, because within this context, this could be the launch pad of how you enter the East African community and that diversity that exists. And we have some excellent prototypes by way of CI Can, Denise, and a powerful leadership which has opened up incredible links between uh, Canadian colleges and Kenyan colleges, all to promote that uh, world diversity and world innovation and promote the highest level of um, compassion towards humanity and understanding of some of the challenges and how we can resolve them. So indeed, I wish you much success and in, please do uh, look out for partnerships within the context of uh, Kenya and um, this, this incredibly important Forum. I thank you all. <laughs>